Welcome, this is Pat Dewar. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. I've got an amazing guest today. Her name is Julie Clark. She is uh, out of uh, Utah, and she is a, uh, a person that when I saw her question, it really got my interest, and it should yours too, because her first question is, what if you could determine who in your audience is your best client in 180 seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty certain that uh, you'd be raising your hand going, tell me more. What do you mean? And so, Julie, you, you've, been, um, you, you've been a publisher, you're an author, you've done all these different things, you podcast or speaker, and you're, you're highly acclaimed. You've been on a number of stages around the country. Tell me more about the answer to the question. 180 seconds to identify your, your ideal client? Absolutely. So as I've been out in that world you mentioned, I noticed for a very long time we have been calling uh, our lead magnets, our eBooks and you know different blueprints, things like that, an even exchange of information. I'll give you this if you give me your email address. And the more I went around seeing that and, and experienced it for myself that, you know, I would download something and I wouldn't open it and then I wouldn't open the emails or I just wanted the gift and then I unsubscribe. I thought, is this really an even exchange of information? Mm. And the answer in my mind was no, you know, going to an event and speaking in a room of a hundred people and, and, you know, a couple people would purchase, but you didn't really know what the other people, what was going on with them. So uh, back in 2016, I discovered some software and I, I took a look at it and I said, you know, using my advertising background, we could get a lot of market research about our clients, a lot of feedback where, you know, what, what are their pains? What are they really experiencing, experiencing? We could put some statements into an assessment marketing form that really identified, are they committed? Are they going to be action takers? Are they willing to invest? Would they, would we like to have a conversation with them as well as setting the success principles of what we do for a living out there and letting people that are at our events or on our webinars or in our summits um, determine where they're at in relationship to success. And I thought that was really important for people because we go to these events, we hear these people talking, but we kind of sit there and go, oh, I'm doing that. I'm not doing that. Do I really need to do so? I thought it was a really great way for our audiences to be able to self-assess where they're really at in relationship to where they're going and for us to be able to have a lot of information and know who's serious and who's not. So what are the, what are the results that you've been able to create for the clients that you're working with? Uh, how has it changed their universe using some of the things that you're doing? Well, to give you an example, one of, one of our speakers out there is a, a very well-known paid speaker. Uh, he was out in a room of 70 people, 61 people took out their phones. They wanted to find out where they were at. And of those 48 uh, identified as high commitment people, 15 people scheduled an appointment on the spot. And then his team was able to go back in and set up appointments with most of the other 33. So what we really did there inside of that room is when they self-identified uh, with the questions about their commitment level and their investment level, we really established who that high commitment person is that's ready to go and wants to talk to you, who that medium commitment person is who needs a little bit of nurturing. Maybe they've just seen you for the first time. They love what you have to say, but not quite sure. And then who are those people in the room that aren't willing, they're not committed, they're not invested. And so by splitting all that up, we have a good idea who, who in our room is ready to purchase today or at least have a conversation about it. And you know from being out in the coaching space that um, there are a lot of people that love what you do. They don't take action. Or you know, we come back with this, this group of leads and we work every single one of them when we really could be more dedicated about working with those people who do want to work with us. Right. And so, I mean, I, I took your test uh, this morning. I was, 
I was uh, uh, just curious. So, you know, you talk about it and I read about it and saw it, but it's on your website. And, and why don't you tell them your website so they can actually, if they want, they can go take the test. Because I was really blown away at one, how easy it was. And then two, how even with all the little different things that I've done with books and, you know, my book and my TV and the other things that I've done, there's a, I still got a long way to go. There are some really good, important keys that I'm missing. And I was able to see that in your assessment. So where do they go? What do they do? And what can they expect afterwards? So uh, the best one to go to is uh, www.leadlogicquiz.com. I know you went to the one over on my website. There's one over there as well. But uh, all of these assessments have a dedicated URL. So when you're out speaking, you don't have to send people to your website. One of the things that happens when we send people to our website is they miss that opt-in or they miss the quiz because there's so much going on there. You know, we have a lot, a lot of things on our site are about our programs, our services. So um, that's one of the first things is it's, it all, they all have their own dedicated URL. So it's easy to send people there and they have one dedicated job to do when they're there and it's take that quiz. Um, what they're going to find out from this quiz is are they generating their own leads in a, an efficient way? Are they pre-qualifying those leads? When they do get into those conversations, uh, are they, do they have good enrollment conversation skills? And I don't just mean closing, because I, the expectation when you have an enrollment call should not always be, I'm gonna close this person today. It would be, it, it's more to serve them, use the results of the assessment to go over what they're doing really well, what they could use help with, and, and steer that into a relationship. So don't just go in with that, with that sales pitch. And then the last thing is, you know, what does what your marketing funnel look like? Do you have one of those big drawn out ones that you know, people click? Because at the end of the day, we want those funnels that are going to be relationship builders, not click builders. Clicks are not relationships. So they're going to find out a little bit about all those. So when you, I know that you're real big on the relationships, the, the talking to people rather than just getting them to click through on a link. Um, and I know that they'll get some great value. When I, I went through the one that uh, I took this morning, it, it was, it really does expose a lot. And, um, but do you tailor those to your clients uh, specifically, or is that it, do people like your clients use the same one that you've used or how does that work? So when we sit down, um, we, we have a consultation once you start and our first consultation is us sitting down and saying, are you, are you putting together a talk? Do you have a program you're selling? You know, what exactly is it that is the product that you're going for here um, in a sales, is sales, uh, environment. And then from there, we figure out what are the success principles of that program? If I were to go through your program, what were the results I would get? What are the things I would have to do to get those results? And then we start crafting the categories and the statements. One of the things that sets this apart from a lot of the internet uh, assessments that you see is um, many of those that the, the, the program that you use. They, one statement or question per page, usually they're yes, no, or maybe multiple choice. We put ours into categories. So when you get your results, you can see there is a gap in what you're doing. So it's not just a disconnected question or statement here and there where you've moved on. Everything is connected. And so when you get your results, you can see, I'm going to give an example here, um, pub profit. You know, you might have a whole gap in your profit area. I, you took a different quiz than the lead logic. Uh, what I see a lot with the lead logic quiz is that people have a gap in enrollment conversations. They don't like them. They feel like, you know, they just, they're not comfortable with the sales. So from there, you're able to talk to that person about, you know, it looks like you're doing this really, really well, but here's a big gap where you could have, you're going to get better results with, with improved um, improved techniques. So that's the first thing you're going to get from it that, that sets it apart, that we do that in the first session. 
we go back and a lot of times I have to reformat them because we want them in a particular way so that we don't skew our results as well. We want them all going positive statements, one through 10. So that's the first thing we do. The second thing we do is uh, we get invested in the traffic drive because the software we use is a mini funnel. I don't feel like you need these big funnels. Yes. So we, we determine uh, what is, where, where is the thank you page going to go? Are we driving traffic to a book? We have a lot of authors who they drive traffic to their book because it's low hanging, it's a low barrier item to get in to find out more about you. And we connect it to Amazon. So every time you're at an event, people are buying your books from Amazon, which pushes it up in the ratings as well. So you stay relevant and on page one. Then we determine those high commitment people. We want those people on our calendars. We want them booking. That's where we start the relationship with people who are willing to invest and they are committed to solving the problem you solve. Then we decide where are we going to send those, those nurture space? Do we wanna give them something free? Do we wanna to talk to them as well? Uh, for many people, they want more leads, so they'll talk to the high and the medium commitment people. And then those low commitment people, we give them something free and we kind of send them on their way. They're in our list, we provide them content, but until they you know, hit rock bottom with whatever they're doing or realizing that it's not working, uh, we're focusing on those people who are invested. So real quick, one of the things that I know uh, would be going through my mind as listening to a show like this is that I go, is this a done for you kind of thing where you do it? Or is it something that you teach others to do? Or how does that work as far as uh, the process? Because there's lots of people that give a lot of information. But uh, I know that there are some people that need a little extra and maybe even, you know, so help me out there, uh, understand what would be the answer. So uh, most of them, most of what we do are done for you. So um, it, it's easy, the software is easy to use and, and people don't have trouble navigating it. It is the particulars of how to write those statements to get the ultimate results, the traffic drive to get the ultimate results. So most of what we do is the done for you model. Very good. No, it's, it's good to know. I, I, the, creating an assessment is not an easy adventure. Um, yeah. It is, in order to uh, state, state, state a question in a way that creates the right response rather than, and I mean, the right response has been what's the truth there? And, and rather than uh, some of the other things, I mean, I, I've seen people try to prove their assessments and uh, it can be a nightmare. And so for you to have, have created and mastered this area can be really huge. And it's not just the, the, the cool thing about what I see you doing is that it's not, it's not just taking a test. It's discovering where the real pain is, where the real need is, where the real uh, solution that you can bring to the table. And even the most important one that needs to be, or even the order that they need to be addressed in, is, am, I, am I seeing that correctly? Yes, yes. In most cases we are, because when you bring me a program, usually you have a sequence you follow to be able to teach those people the right way to do it. Um, a, great, a great example is uh, uh, Dan Clark, one of our, our paid speakers. Um, he has a sequence he takes people through when he teaches them how to become a paid speaker. So if you looked at his quiz, you know, category one follows the beginning steps, category two follows the next steps. So a lot of times sequencing is what many entrepreneurs are missing. They're, they have the wrong steps in the wrong order. So yes, it, it is, it's, it's doing that really, really well. Hmm. That, uh, I, I'm curious, who do you see as, can I just say the ideal client? Who is the person that would get the, the, the most value working with you in your process? Uh, we have a lot of authors. Uh, more and more, we're gaining a speaker crowd and the people who are doing, especially right now, webinars and summits. I actually, uh, six weeks ago, I thought my business was over and all of a sudden people had to switch to online. 
And we got a lot of calls from people who said, you know what, I did webinars back in 2017 and my lead magnet didn't work. Let's, you know, let's get something that will actually help me create a better program. Because one of the things that happens when you start getting this, feed, this feedback from the assessment and, and having more and more conversations with people is it's sort of a blueprint of where to go next. You have validation on where these point, pay, uh, pain points are so you can create better programs and services from them. And that is one of the, one of the distinct advantages over, I'm just gonna give you an ebook and you're gonna give me your email address, is you're really, you're not understand, having an understanding of why people are grabbing what you have to offer. The other thing that was a big part of this was uh, I, I've written, I think nine books now. Nice. Uh, my, fir my first okay. six were mystery novels. And one of the things, oh yeah, <laughs> I have a great story around my mystery novels. But um, one of the things when you're writing a fiction novel is that uh, you, don't, you show, you don't tell. So I'm showing you a story that you can visualize in your head and, and versus telling you a story. So the difference between that is, is think about it for a minute. If I come in and you said something so interesting that you're like, oh, look, I sucked at this. If I said, hey, Pat, you totally sucked at this, this, and this, I think you'd get a little bit defensive. But if I can show you through your own self-evaluation that you suck at it. Right. I sit there thinking, oh, so I suck at that. That's good. Thank you very much. No, no that's what you told that me when we got harder and faster. <laughs> Just ow. That's that's yeah. what you said to me when we first got on. Is is I you know, know I really found some areas, and it's funny because there there is a fill in answer at the end on on one of my other ones where I ask what your biggest takeaway is, and people say that a lot. Like, wow, I've got a lot to learn, or you know, they'll say exactly what you said. I didn't realize I sucked with this, <laughs> but um, that that's good information. For you to have and and guess what I haven't told you at all that you're deficient in any area and created a situation where you can get defensive you've kind of revealed that for yourself it, it, biggest principle in in persuasion in my opinion is if I state it you'll debate it if I ask it you own your answer because you created it and people embrace what they create right oh I've never heard that that's awesome not original it's Brendan Bouchard said that. I can't steal that from him. He, <laughs> he, I heard that. And I went, oh, my God, that is so good. And I could say, as Brendan has heard, as I've heard it said, and then now as I always say, but that would be too, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, that that would be normal speaker. <laughs> but yeah. Another, life. exactly. Another feature that we have on there, and, and I didn't actually look at your answer on this point part. I would imagine that you're an expert is, we have a micro commitment before you submit where we actually have you self-identify what level you're at. And for a lot of my clients, that's a big help because if I jump on the phone with you and I assume you're at a much higher level than you are, my conversation's going to overwhelm you and you probably won't purchase. Conversely, if you're at a very high level like you are and you're looking for somebody to take you to that next step, and I'm, I'm saying things like, do you know what an autoresponder is? You're gonna kind of just go, yeah, she's, she's not the person that's gonna be able to take me to that higher level. So it really allows you to cater your conversation to the level of person you're speaking to as well. What's really funny is even when I went through it, I knew about a lot of this stuff. I had some things in place um, uh, with my speaking schedule, as much as it's been in the last five years, especially, it's it's hard to dedicate a lot of time to uh, some of the systems and social media, and you know, because when I wasn't on the uh, plane, strange, and automobile, so to speak, uh, as much, it was uh, it was a lot of time was spent on that area, and since then, I have backed off and and I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot less because I didn't have as much automation hence some of the things that I've done in building a site in the last six months and the book and the other things that are there and what's nice is they're beginning to get some traction but they were but when you asked about commitment I was like um 
I am, but I've already got a hundred little chess pieces on the board that I'm moving around. And I'm like, how do you carve out more time? And what would you say to somebody just, just like me or that, that they have already got, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever felt like an entrepreneur is moving a hundred pawns in a chess game where that's kind of the major player and you're moving these things one step at a time and, and, and you know, it's kind of a hamster wheel. But a lot of times that's all that you can do in a day and still serve your clients and still do the mm -hmm. things you need to do and still do, you, you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And every entrepreneur feels that way because, you know, you're responsible for everything and it really comes down to, you know, how well you can delegate some of those things and, you know, like content, content's really hard to delegate, I think, um, you know, so it really comes down to what's important, what's not. The reason I feel like this is one of the most important things is if you are out there and you have a business and you're not getting feedback, you're not going to have a business for very long. And I see so many coaches jump into the coaching space and they have a really great idea, but they create without creating that audience first. And if you create the audience first, you have a ton of feedback. So now you are developing creating exactly the right products, exactly the right books, exactly the right services that will sell. And I see so many people do this backwards. So um, one of the things that, that I, from my market research background that I love about this is you see patterns over and over and over in the answers. And that is such a big clue into who is purchasing, where people are struggling. And, and once you have those pieces, you really can develop some killer things. Excellent. What would be the next step for somebody that's listening to this, that likes the ideas? What should they do right now? They should go over and take one of these quizzes and talk to me. <laughs> so, you know, the uh, lead, the lead. where do they go to get the, the quiz again? I want to make sure people that uh, might've jumped on later. Got what? it. Um, you can go over to leadlogicquiz.com and, and go through that quiz and see not only what it's all about, but you can see the branding, you can see how it's put together and, you know, where your answers lead you to. Right. So they can discover this was leadlogicquiz.com, uh, right? And uh, so do that. And I would say do it now. This is Pat Dewar. Thank you so much, Juliet, for being on the show today and for sharing your ideas and your, your services because I really want to see businesses um, activate their power so they can create the success that they want in their life. Uh, thank you again, Juliet. It's been an honor working with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, folks. We'll talk to you next time.